Fuji knows how to make photographers happy with pleasing design, physical controls, and great features. The X-T10 joins the family in inheriting and improving on the features of its near and distant relatives. It's small and at 381 grams very light. A nice disguise for a 16 megapixel APS-C size sensor. It feels solid and well made with stylish silver accents. A discreet all black version is also available. Interchangeable lenses using Fuji's X mount. Small right handed grip in front, thumb rest on the back. After trying it out around town it felt like a good choice for a holiday in France. The inline viewfinder is so bright, clear and colorful that it set my expectations high and I wasn't disappointed. Luckily, the slightly oversaturated colors in the viewfinder are more naturally rendered in the RAW files. The viewfinder display rotates when you shoot in portrait mode. Why has no one else picked up on this great feature? But why doesn't the LCD display rotate? The viewfinder LCD switch is logically and ergonomically positioned right beside the viewfinder. The LCD rotates up 90 degrees, down 45, not a touchscreen. Across the top, drive mode dial and a switch to release the cleverly disguised flash. Flash shoe, shutter speed dial and an auto mode dial switch. Use the reader dials to select one of 14 scene modes and advanced which detects the scene automatically. Old school shutter release with an on off collar, movie record button and an EV dial. How I wish this was switchable to ISO. Set the aperture using a ring on the lens, which isn't marked on this ramped aperture 18 to 55. This switch on the lens sets aperture to auto. If the shutter speed is also at A, that's program, otherwise auto aperture means shutter priority. The shutter dial has full stop increments, use the front dial to access one third stop increments, two up and two down. Set the shutter to A and aperture to manual for aperture priority. Aperture and shutter are displayed in the viewfinder or on the LCD. With both aperture and shutter on A, use the front dial for other exposure combinations. Use this switch to select from three display modes with overlay, clean which displays the overlay only while adjusting, and info panel. Fuji's on-screen text is smaller, but seemingly higher resolution than most. With both aperture and shutter off the A position, M in the bottom left, there's a meter. Use photometry to select multi, spot, or average metering. Face detection is a secret photometry mode, rendering this setting unavailable when it's on. ISO ranges from 200 to 6400 for raw images with three auto settings which are customized with a base and limit ISO setting as well as a shutter speed, the threshold at which ISO is adjusted instead of shutter speed. Even at 6400 ISO, minimal noise in RAW, mild softness in JPEGs. Four more ISO settings are available when shooting JPEG, 100, 12.8, 25.6 and 51.2. Three image sizes, 16, 8, and 4 megapixels, each with three aspect ratios. Fine, normal, and raw, and a couple of combinations. The X-T10 supports both mechanical shutter, up to 1 4,000th, and electronic shutter, up to 1 32,000th. Turn the shutter dial to 1 4,000th and select higher speeds using the front dial. Four sound options for the electronic shutter and four volume settings, including silent. The mechanical shutter has a quiet mechanical click. I prefer to shoot autofocus single, pressing the AFL button or soft pressing the shutter to lock focus and then snap. At least it's a technique I can access and master, it's fast and confident. Press down on the navigation circle, then rear dial changes size and the navigation circle buttons move it around the screen, very usable and useful. I'm also liking the AF plus MF mode, allowing me to adjust when the X-T10 and I disagree on what should be in focus. The switch on the front selects M, manual, then use the AFL button to focus and adjust with the lens ring. And snap away, knowing that focus won't change each time you press the shutter. Three assist modes in manual, press the rear dial to select. Expanded view is called standard, and if that's not working for you, try mono digital split or edge peaking options. Press the front dial for alternate focus mode, zone, and wide tracking. 
Zone area is 3 by 3, 3 by 5, or 5 by 5, movable on a 77 point grid, unless you're in continuous when it reverts to a small central focus area. Focus options work well, deserving a gold star, but they're not quite best in class. Fuji knows film and provides several emulations. Press left on the navigation circle, although they're not all available in auto mode. When you use these settings, shooting in RAW Plus saves a JPEG with the emulation and a clean RAW file. Throughout, colors are vibrant and accurate from blue skies to intense flowers, crisp detail with a soft bokeh. Excellent stabilization, allowing me to take longer exposures, combining motion blur foregrounds with sharp backgrounds, even at one quarter second. There are eight filter settings with six partial color modes. Select two favorites for quick access on the mode dial, or press the button above menu to select. The dial also includes settings for multiple exposure, as well as panorama. Pan in any direction, 2160 pixels high, 6400 wide in M, 9600 wide in L. Just perfect for capturing some of the wide vistas we encountered. JPEG High Speed Burst gets 11 images in under 3 seconds before slowing to about 2 per second. For better performance, use the electronic shutter, 16 images in 3 seconds, slowing to about 4 per second. Timer is not a drive mode, which leads to an interesting Easter egg. Set the timer, and then select either high or low burst to take five images, so everyone has their eyes open. Select bracket one or two on the drive mode dial, then configure using the top of the navigation circle. Bracket saves three continuous images, one third to one stop for exposure over three exposures, but also ISO, film simulation, dynamic range, and white balance, which takes a single shot. Very useful inside Sainte Chapelle, which has enormous stained glass windows. Use Screen Setup Custom Setting, the last option, to add or subtract any of the on screen items histogram, framing guide, level, four pages of selections. I find this ability to make the screen less distracting an aid to checking the settings I really need to watch for. Lock and unlock the info panel screen by holding the menu button down. Fuji also lent me the XF 18mm f2. I found the 18-55 kit lens to be useful for nearly all situations, so rarely use the 18mm prime while we were on holiday. The menu contains two sections, shooting and setup, or in playback, playback and setup. Each carousels independently. The nesting makes it hard to remember where to find a setting like configuring the advanced filters, which is combined with bracket. I am fond of Fuji's quick menu, now that I'm finally getting the navigation circle to select rear dial to change model. Handy, usable, and customizable. Seven custom settings can be saved and accessed from slot one. Custom settings can be captured from the current setting, but can also be reviewed and edited. This capability makes sure you've thought of everything and shows clearly which settings are being controlled. To customize any button, just hold it down until the custom button menu appears, showing the physical position and current setting of each. Feels like a nice usability touch, but it's also necessary as a reference as the default operations aren't printed on the buttons. Had to set button 7 in the bottom corner to off as I was constantly activating it unintentionally. I used the X-T10 to record video segments for the review of another camera while we were in France. I'm very happy with the results, but there are some peculiarities to get used to. There's no movie mode as such, so press the red button to start recording. The button is so hard to activate that you'll never start recording accidentally. In fact, sometimes it's hard to start intentionally. Combined with the X-T10's inability to change from LCD to viewfinder while recording, Starting a video is awkward, with a specific series of steps that I learned through trial and error. Autofocus wasn't great in video, and expanded view for manual focus isn't available while recording. Use Movie Setup to select mode. At full HD, all frame rates, including European 50 and 25, are available, although record time is limited to 14 minutes and 31 seconds. Movie ISO is independent of still ISO and must be set down in the nested menu before you start recording. Goes from 400 to 6400. 
which means simulating the shot in still mode and then transferring the ISO to the movie menu. To record video, after setting the ISO, I'd set the shutter speed at 1 60th and aperture to manual, then put it to my eye and start recording. The histogram disappears when video recording starts, so you'll be exposing by eye, making manual aperture adjustments if required. Set focus to manual and focus the subject. The optional external mic provided excellent results for on-camera voice recording, with good audible recordings even in noisy situations. I'm having trouble seeing the screen in the sun. And it mounts on the flash shoe and connects to the micro audio jack, which doubles as a remote control port. There's a four-step level adjustment with meter display, but no display while recording. There's no headphone jack. There is an HDMI port, but it works only in playback. The X-T10 would be a much better video camera if there was live HDMI while recording video. Battery life is better than average, with a single charge lasting all day. The X-T10 is easily mistaken for a film camera. Several people were surprised to learn that it was numérique, French for digital. The autofocus and exposure systems work well. The physical controls make manual adjustments accessible and simple. The resulting pictures and video speak for themselves.